Um, first of all, just want to thank everyone so much for joining today. Um, just want to acknowledge all of the hard work and determination that everyone has had to really endure these past two years and how far we've come and coming back strong. And uh, really that the Office of Nightlife is here to uh, continue to help you do that. For those of you who don't know, I believe most of you know, my name is Arielle Pallets. I'm the Executive Director for the Office of Nightlife, which is a dedicated non-enforcement liaison, uh, dedicated line of communication and support between the city and the nightlife industry. Um, I, you know, right before we uh, get started with today's presentation, um, I'm going to just fill you in on a few things that the Office of Nightlife is doing. But the reason why we're here today is to introduce the nightlife industry, for those of you who may not be aware, to NYC and Company, which is really the agency that supports all of the local and global New York City tourism and campaigns, and really helps to support New York City's culture. And um, really wanted to make sure that uh, New York City's nightlife businesses are aware of all the incredible resources and support that is available to them. And that is what we're doing here today. Um, just really quickly, for those of you who may not be aware, the Office of Nightlife is really here in the event that you're having any issues whatsoever with any city agencies, whether it be the Department of Buildings or Health or DOT, any questions or concerns whatsoever, and you're having trouble navigating, we're here to help you do that with our MASH approach, multi-agency support for hospitality. Um, we also, for those of you who may not know, have a newly launched mediation program called MEND NYC to help you with maybe any uh, complaints or quality of life concerns you might be experiencing with the upstairs neighbor next door or across the street. And it's really a non-enforcement solution uh, to help uh, create communication and compromise with our partnership at the city's Center for Creative Conflict Resolution at Oath. So if you have any issues regarding that, um, we're here for you. I believe our team is putting some links into the chat and you can always also find out more at nyc.gov slash nightlife. Um, another thing that we are offering are, is free mental health support for owners, operators, and staff and performers, free weekly um, online support groups uh, every Monday at 4 p.m., as well as free one-on-one -on -one support with case managers to help you to develop a personalized mental health plan through our Elevate Nightlife Mental Health Campaign. So, which we work with the, the Department of Health. And we also have a Narcan Behind Every Bar campaign. We know that there is a fentanyl crisis in New York and our, um, we really see nightlife establishments as part of the solution to help sell, save lives in a place where people can look out for each other. And so we also have a webinar that teaches you and trains you how to use Narcan and where you can get Narcan kits for free behind uh, to put behind the bar like you do a CPR kit. Um, so the Office of Nightlife is here for you. That's some of the things we do. And one of the other things we do is to be a convener between um, our office, the industry, and all the great city agencies and services. One that we love one of the most is NYC and Co. And uh, you might be familiar with Broadway Week, Restaurant Week, all the beautiful campaigns throughout the pandemic as well. And um, Today, we have uh, the president and CEO, Fred Dixon, as well as other members of the agency to share with you who is NYC and Co, what are the benefits of membership, and I think it's really important that we work together as an um, agency and industry to really elevate nightlife's uh, presence and representation as people are starting to come back from all over the world and in the city starting to go out that nightlife is really represented um, 
at NYC and Co and in all the things that we do. So right now I'm going to kick it over to Fred Dixon and he will begin and we will start a presentation and then afterward we'll have a Q&A. So in the meantime, as this is going on, take screenshots of things that are interesting and then drop your questions into the Q&A and then we'll draw from that to ask questions at the end. So without further ado, I bring Fred Dixon to you. Thank you. Ariel, thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's terrific to be with you. Ariel, I want to thank you for your leadership uh, and for helping us kick off this important dialogue and conversation. I just want to say uh, from the get-go how much we value the partnership uh, with the Office of Nightlife and with the Mayor's Office of Media and Entertainment, Commissioner Del Castillo, and Ariel have been remarkable supporters of tourism and just terrific partners for us at NYC and Company in, uh, in all things, pre-COVID and certainly post-COVID. And I'm a big fan of the work that you do, Ariel, so thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah, sure thing. Thank you for all you do. And thank you all for joining us again this afternoon um, to uh, hear a little bit of an overview of NYC and Company, uh, a little bit about the tourism industry, to meet some of our colleagues, um, and how we can work more closely together in the recovery um, as, we, as we build back. Um, I don't, uh, hopefully don't have to tell this audience uh, how important nightlife is, obviously to the city of New York overall, but specifically to the visitor economy, to the tourism industry, uh, when visitors think about New York, they certainly think about um, its nightlife uh, and how legendary it is, as you certainly have helped build the brand of New York over the years and are stewards for it going forward. So quickly, uh, NYC and Company, um, Ariel gave us a, a, a good nod there, and thank you for that, um, is the official destination marketing organization for the five boroughs of New York City. Um, our mission is, as you see on the screen, maximizing travel and tourism opportunities that's building economic prosperity um, in all five boroughs for businesses um, and for the community at large. Um, and then of course, spreading the dynamic image of New York City around the world. Um, we are not a city agency. Um, MOM, of course, uh, and the Office of Nightlife are, are uh, tools of government um, in that regard. But NYC and Company actually is a private nonprofit 501c6 membership organization. And we hold a contract with the city of New York for tourism services. And that's the normal setup for, for most all tourism uh, organizations across the United States. Um, and that's how MIC Company was established and, and how we operate. It's the intersection of the private industry, obviously, and city government to grow tourism. So uh, we're really honored to do this work. Um, next slide, if you would, Rob. So a little bit about our membership, and, and the team is going to go into to greater detail. And I want to just take one second and pause here and just introduce my colleagues that you're going to be seeing on screen and that you're going to be hearing from in just a moment. First off is Nancy Mamana, our Chief Marketing Officer. Um, Jeanette Rausch, our EVP of Marketing, um, John Durbin, the Executive Vice President and Executive Creative Director, um, who uh, heads up part of our creative and content, or all of our creative and content team, and, uh, and does a terrific job. Um, and then Rob Beckham, of course, from our membership team, and Kelly Curtin, our EVP of Membership, are all on the call, as is Krista McGovern, I see, uh, one of my faves, McGovern. thanks for being on. Um, the, so this is the uh, front-facing team of MIC Company and Leadership. I'm really honored to, to be spending this afternoon a little bit of time with you. So quick snapshot of our membership, and they'll go into a little more detail on some of this. We do represent the broad sector of travel and tourism and hospitality. Um, you see, of course, the biggest category here is restaurants and nightclubs. And one of the reasons we're really excited to talk to you is that this is majority restaurants. Um, and we really would love to have the opportunity to engage more deeply with the nightlife industry. Um, you are a remarkable part of the, the image of New York and, and why people come here. Um, and we want to make sure that we're doing all we can to engage together. You also see our membership is made up of obviously accommodations across the five boroughs, uh, cultural organizations and tourist attractions, sports teams, recreation attractions, uh, retail and other categories. So it is, it is the complete ecosystem of, of a visitor's experience in New York, whether you're coming for business or for leisure, right? So we do a lot of work with conventions and meetings as well, recruiting them, but also service, for servicing them while they're here and finding venues uh, from, from many of you. Um, that's an important part of the equation. So we'd like to grow and build out in a ro more robust way, nightlife uh, engagement. Next slide. So just a quick snapshot. Um, so this is obviously pre-COVID, but to give you a sense of the power of hospitality and tourism in New York, 2019 was the 10th consecutive year of growth in visitors to New York City, 66 million visitors uh, came to our city um, in 2019. We uh, measure a visitor, a visitor as whether or not they uh, spent the night or traveled more than 50 miles. So we can't count commuters. Anyone that comes uh, from within 50 miles 
of the city of New York. Uh, but if they do spend the night, we get to count them, right? If they're taking the night to celebrate an anniversary or a special occasion, they're gonna be acting like a tourist so we can count them. But 66 million was, a, was an all time high. They generated $72 billion in economic impact. And that was $47.5 billion in direct spending at venues like yours, hotels, restaurants, uh, shops, arts organizations. Uh, they generated seven, almost $7 billion in tax revenue, and that's just at the state and the city level. If you average that out, that's $2,100 per household in the city of New York. And most importantly, uh, certainly in today's dialogue, um, is the job support. And so 400,000 jobs uh, across leisure, uh, travel, and hospitality in 2019, representing almost 10% of all the employment in New York. This number is still down about 130,000, and we're working hard to accelerate its recovery, and of course, your sector um, is an important part of that. Next slide. This is a snapshot of the latest forecast of uh, visitor recovery. So you see on the left side of the screen in 2019, that record performance, um, the gray bar at the top, of this, uh, the top of that bar represents international travel. The blue bar represents domestic travelers. Uh, it takes the spending of four domestic travelers to equal the spending of one international, right? They stay longer, they spend more, they explore more. Arguably, they're, they're probably huge consumers of nightlife compared to their domestic counterparts. Um, and so they're an important part of the equation. You see how things fell down in 2020, right? 22 million visitors. That largely was from a strong first quarter before, before COVID uh, came onto the scene. 2021 started to stumble back, right? And then Delta, of course, um, was a huge setback in 2021, Omicron at Christmas. But now we feel like you know, we're entering into a new era. And the experts at Oxford Economics who have been done our forecasting for more than 10 years um, and are leaders really in this field um, in conjunction with our team feel like 85% of our visitor volume will return by the end of this year. And that's a huge statement, but there is so much pent up demand in the marketplace. Um, and there is so much of a desire for a return to New York. We've been accelerating that and the team can talk a little bit about how we market New York and how we accelerate that recovery. But we're expecting about 8 million international travelers by the end of this year and a little over 48 million domestic. Domestic still being the biggest part of the equation in terms of volume. And then if, as you look out, you see it's really gonna be 2023 or 24 when we start to inch back um, into those volumes that we're accustomed to uh, in 2019. Next slide. In terms of pace of recovery, th this is what I was just speaking to. And you know, in 23, we think we'll be almost there. Our goal with all our work, of course, is to accelerate this and get across that line sooner. Uh, but it is a marathon that we're in, not just a sprint in terms of full visitor recovery, but we are very bullish on the quick return of travelers to New York. Like I said, 85% of the market will return uh, by the end of this year. So that's a tremendous opportunity. We want to make sure that nightlife is in that dialogue and that you're engaged and plugged in as much as possible. You're going to help us draw those visitors, uh, but you'll also stand to benefit significantly from their return. Next slide. All right. So with that, I'm going to turn the program over to my colleague, Jeanette Roush, EVP of Marketing, to talk a little bit about our efforts and, and how we draw visitors to New York. Jeanette. Great. Thank you so much, Fred. And I'm here to share with you some information on how we market New York City to visitors. So Rob, if we go to the next slide, uh, I'm going to start off talking about our tourism campaign, uh, which is, the key, if you go to the slide after that, please. Uh, and so our tourism campaign is how we advertise and market New York City to visitors around the world. Uh, we launched the It's Time for New York City campaign last June uh, with the strategy of creating awareness that New York City is open and a vibrant place to visit, and also to generate some FOMO, some fear of missing out with our key visitor markets. Uh, and we did that with ongoing and real-time content across owned and our paid channels to highlight all of the vibrancy and breadth of what the city has to offer. You move to the next slide, Rob. Uh, so this is some examples of how we've iterated this campaign to feature new icons uh, to keep it fresh and lively uh, from June through now and into the immediate future, uh, using ads that combine both graphics and imagery. Uh, this content was used in our uh, local out-of-home presence, uh, which we use both on bus shelters throughout the city and on Link NYC screens. Uh, this is how we promote our digital experience and also our itinerary planning tools on nycgo.com. 
Uh, these assets were also used in a large digital campaign that was targeting travel dreamers and travel planners across the U.S. Uh, as part of this campaign, we also ran three different television commercials last year. Uh, one highlighted activities in the summer, the second highlighted the return of culture in the fall, and then we had a, a commercial promoting holiday visitation around the holidays. And so we're taking this seasonal approach to help cement the message that the time for New York City is right now. It's not some distant date in the future. We are ready to welcome visitors today uh, and double down on creating that fear of missing out all of the great things that are happening in New York City. If you move to the next slide, Rob, uh, this shows some of our domestic out of home assets in Philadelphia as one example. We've been running out of home domestically again since last June with a particular emphasis in the Northeast. Uh, so that's obviously Philadelphia on the screen here uh, and other key feeder markets. So many of our media executions promote a partner's call to action as well. So we've partnered domestically with the AAA, with American Airlines and with Amtrak to help provide special fares and incentives for people to travel to New York City. If we go to the next slide, this will give us a look at our global out-of-home presence. So this began uh, as far back as 2020, actually, with the New York City Misses You Too campaign, which we were able to run on digital media uh, internationally through a partnership that we have through the city with JC Deco. Uh, so this creative was featured in over 15 markets in 2020. Uh, and then we were able to pivot uh, once the borders reopened last year to NYC is ready for you, uh, showing that the city was back and vibrant. Uh, so this ran in the UK, Mexico, Japan, and Sweden, where again, we have that access to the digital out of home inventory. You move to the next slide. We can see some examples of when the borders were fully reopened, we were able to launch the It's Time for New York City campaign internationally. So this campaign ran uh, in 10 markets in 2021, and we were able to expand this with digital media in 2022. Now, if we go to the next slide, I'm gonna just quickly highlight some of what we call our vibrancy programs. Uh, so we were really thrilled after last year's hiatus that we were able to bring back NYC winter outing for its third season. Uh, and so this is a time of year when we overlap uh, three of our marquee programs, which are NYC Broadway Week, NYC Restaurant Week, and NYC Must See Week, along with a new program that we created this year called NYC Hotel Week, which provided 22% uh, discounts at over 100 hotels in the five boroughs. So all of these programs involve a value message of some kind because we're trying to drive visitation during you know, January and February, which is the shoulder period when it comes to tourism into the city. So Broadway week and must see week include half price tickets to Broadway uh, cultural institutions and attractions. And then restaurant week includes obviously prefix meals. Uh, so we were really pleased to see you know, the strong response to the programs this year, you know, in addition to driving a lot of traffic uh, to those institutions. We know that we were able to drive $17 million in ticket sales to Broadway shows through the course of Broadway Week. So we're pleased to support the industry in that manner. And now I believe I am sending this over to my colleague, John Durbin, to talk about the uh, content side of what we do. Thanks, Jeanette. Appreciate it. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm John Durbin. I'm one of the company's executive creative directors, and I'm going to talk to you as build about some of the content that we've produced to market the city to visitors. Um, the creative and content team, which I co-lead here at NYC and Company, produces all of our creative executions. And at the same time, we also operate as a kind of in-house lifestyle publication producing content on an ongoing basis about the city to inspire visitors to travel here and help them navigate once they arrive. Um, Rob, next slide, if you could. Our primary channel for this content is our website, um, which you can see here, nycgo.com. We produce articles, photo galleries, interviews, trend pieces, and videos, among others. And we're closely aligned with our social media and email teams. Uh, Rob, next slide. 
who help spread the word. Um, we're active, as you can see here, on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and many others, and have a pretty sizable digital imprint. Um, in terms of showing you examples, uh, next slide. I thought we would start with uh, the digital extension of the It's Time for NYC campaign that Jeanette was mentioning. Um, this is the graphic on the landing page for that campaign. Uh, we launched this last summer, and uh, the page leveraged the traffic we received from paid elements of the campaign, encouraging visitors and locals to build itineraries using the content on our website. I'm sure uh, it'll come as no surprise to learn that many visitors want to experience the city like a local, and so we gathered together recommendations from a series of well-known New Yorkers and NYC institutions so we've run itineraries from folks like Marcus Samuelson, Asaph Berg, and the Wicked Witch of the West, as in uh, the Witch from Wicked, the Broadway musical, um, and also from businesses like Brooklyn Winery and the New York Knicks. Itineraries are, like, are one pillar of our content. Uh, Rob, next slide. Another area of focus for us, you can see this, uh, is in multicultural content and marketing. Over the past few years, we've launched several verticals on our website, including the one that you see here, the Black Experience in NYC, as well as the Latino Experience in NYC and the Asian Experience in NYC. Like the itinerary content in the tourism campaign, the idea here is to inspire visitors to choose NYC and help them navigate the city once they arrive. We work with local creators from those communities to tell our stories, and we've run guides to neighborhoods like Flatbush in Jamaica, must-see spots in Chinatown and Flushing, and how to experience Colombian culture in the city, among many other stories. Uh, in addition, last year we produced a series of short films uh, in one series called The Freedom to Be, covering subjects like dancers at Alvin Ailey and the Black Surf community in the Rockaways. And if you get a chance, uh, please do watch I think they turned out beautifully and give you a good idea of the kind of content that the team is capable of. Uh, next slide. We may be stuck. It's stuck. It's been okay. a moment. Okay. Maybe I pause my share and resume share. That will work. Give me a moment, everybody. Okay, cool. Thanks, Rob. Um, we also cover the city by category, and you can see here the nightlife landing page. We have landing pages on our site for all manners of category, but of course, nightlife is the most relevant here. Um, we're in the process of reworking our content strategies now because we are going to relaunch and redesign the site. Uh, one of our big projects for this year. But in essence, the coverage breaks down to three component parts on each of the verticals. Relatively evergreen content, like roundups of venues by theme. Uh, relatively timely content, meaning coverage of events. And then a filterable list of venues on the site by category. Um, I should mention that obviously, especially with the nightlife community, that event listings are particularly important. And we are in the process of looking at the best ways for us to put that content on the website now moving forward. Okay. And then last, I think we wanted to show you our latest promotional video uh, as an example of the kind of content that we produce. Oh, here you can see the listing of venues on the uh, on the nightlife page. But yeah. Uh, we wanted to show you our promotional video. Uh, it is a kind of supercut of the TV commercials for the It's Time for NYC campaign that Jeanette had mentioned, um, and uh, also includes some sound bites. So take it away. It's time for the show to begin. Let's go. Hey. right now in the streets is like nothing I've ever felt. 
electric. It's colorful, it's vibrant, <laughs> which is why I love it. All the flavor of the world are in New York City, but also the entire world come to New York City. When you come to a museum, you travel from room to room, you experience a new sense of awe. The city of New York is a very fashionable city. Going to a show is pure magic. Walking into a theater, seeing the lights dim, hearing that orchestra tune up. There is no New York City without Broadway. I think people should come to New York because there is nothing like it. To be here and to understand it, you're gonna have to be here. New York is back, baby. New York is back, baby. Um, great. I hope you enjoyed that. I think, Kelly, I'm tossing it over to you. Thank you, John. Can everyone hear me okay? John, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. Okay, great. All righty. Um, well, hopefully you enjoyed that, that uh, great um, sizzle reel that, that we did. We've got a very talented team behind all of our video assets. Um, okay, so um, you're probably one wondering, um, that's a great website, NYC Go, how do I get on there? Um, so we're gonna tell you exactly how you do get on there. Um, one of the ways you get onto our website is by being a member. So as Fred mentioned earlier, we are a 501c6, we're a private not-for-profit. We have a contract with the city of New York to perform the services that Fred spoke about earlier, which is to inspire visitors to come and to spread them around all five boroughs. Um, and um, so all of our members, which we're here to talk to you a little bit about membership, um, all of our members get um, a guaranteed um, um, page, if you will, on our website. But we also have non-members on our site. And here's where your homework comes in right now. So we, we, we can't promote you if we don't know about you and if we don't have like pertinent information like you know, your hours, the correct name, your address, and some beautiful photos that promote your business. So our colleague, Kristen McGovern, is going to drop a Google form into the chat. And then Ariel and Jose are also going to send it out after this um, presentation. And we would love for you to fill out some basic information about your business in the Google form. Um, once we get your Google form back, we're going to send you another note to um, give you instructions on how to send us photographs so that we can add photographs to your listing. We will also have a little checkbox on the Google form that says, yes, I'm interested in membership information. And you can check that off if you would like it. Um, if you'd like to receive that, we'll, we'll reach out to you. We'll send you an email. We'll set up a time to talk. Um, also on the Google form, we will have your email address and we'll be able to invite you to our annual meeting, which we are thrilled about. It's going to take place um, in just a few weeks on March the 30th at the Javits Center. Um, our annual meeting is for our members, but as a special thank you for joining us here today, we would like to invite you to come. So we will send you an invite to attend our annual meeting, um, and that will give you a chance to learn even more about what NYC and company um, does, um, the, the, the kinds of education we provide, the kinds of networking opportunities we provide. So we hope um, if you're available that you can join us then. Um, so next slide, I think. Join us. So Fred mentioned uh, again that we have a contract with the city. We're a private not-for-profit and our budget is um, partly from the city 
Um, but the monies that the city gives us, quite frankly, is not enough for us to compete against Orlando and Las Vegas and San Francisco. They all want the same visitors that we want. They all want the same big meetings. They all want the Super Bowl. They all want the World Cup in 2026. So, so it, takes a, it takes money to market and to try to acquire these visitors, um, which is why we are a private public-private partnership. So the um, we do have funding from the city, which we are very grateful for, and it allows us to work um, with other city agencies like MOM and ONL. Um, and we also have private members. And so members pay us dues. And the, the investment that our members make in NYC and company helps us to do our job. And it also helps our members um, to be invested because, you know, if they are paying membership dues, um, hopefully they're going to want to engage with us. And when, when businesses engage with us, it's good for the business. Kind of like a gym, we talk about it um, a little bit like a gym, right? So if you're paying your membership dues to the gym, hopefully you're going to go to the gym, you're going to get on one of the machines, and it's going to be good for you in the end. Um, so... I'm going to jump into what the membership businesses, what, what the membership uh, benefits are. But before I do that, I'm going to cut to the end of the book and give you, give you the summary. The, the, um, the juicy part here is that um, we want to make a special offer to you to join. Um, so we're going to do 50% off to um, those of you who are on this Zoom today, and um, we'll we'll honor that if you want if you're interested in joining anytime before May 31, let's say, um, we're we're happy to give you 50% off to make it um, as affordable as possible for you to um, for you to try us out here at NYC and Company. And the way that our membership dues work is um, it's a bit of a tiered system. So if you're a smaller business, you do pay less. Um, and if your business is a brick and mortar business in one of the boroughs, um, you also pay less. You pay half of what a Manhattan business pays. Um, and so all of that, we're going to slice it by 50% for you today. So we won't get into the nitty gritty, but you know, we're, we're very hands-on, we're very approachable. Um, if you're interested and you fill out the Google form or you can get our, our contact info from Ariel or Jose, um, uh, Rob, Kristen, myself, we're all happy to talk to you about this. Okay, so what are the membership benefits? What do you get for this, this big bargain, this 50% off? So a big part of how we communicate, um, as John Durbin talked about, is through our website. So all of our members get um, a dedicated page. We call it a venue page that has a direct link. It has beautiful images that you submit to us, has your description and an NYC member badge on your, on your, um, on your page, which when consumers see that, it, you know, it, it connotates an officialness, if you will. Next slide. Intelligent partnership. We have lots of great research information and, and our members um, can access all of this information. Um, we have a member portal and all of our research is on there. So if you can't sleep at two in the morning, you can go on and access all of the research information. We have fact sheets, we have tourism trend reports, um, information like Fred uh, shared in the very beginning. We have visitor um, and key market profiles. You can read up, um, you know, we have separate page uh, fact sheets on uh, the visitors from Brazil, for example, or the visitors from the UK, or we have shopping um, information sheets. We have um, dining and, and nightlife sheets. Um, we also have calendars. You can see who's coming to the Javits Center, so you can tap into that. We have a member directory, so you can be in touch with other members. There's there's lots of um, lots of um, research and information available to you as a member. Next slide. Um, this is just a sample of our fact sheets. Um, next slide. I'm going to run through some of this because there is a lot. There's a lot of benefits here. Engage with us. So we have networking events, the annual meeting, March 30th at the Javits Center, which you're invited to. It's a great opportunity to, um, to experience one of our networking events, as well as it's great education. Um, 
Our educational series is called NYC and Company Talks. We have um, regular panel discussions on great industry relevant information. You know, a few years back, we worked with Ariel actually on um, welcoming World Pride. So we had a big talks on World Pride and what did that mean? And where were these visitors gonna come from? And what was the schedule of events? And how, how could restaurants and nightlife and museums um, welcome all the people that were gonna come here for World Pride? That's just an example. Uh, Tourism Ready, it's a free program that we run. You actually don't need to become a member to be in Tourism Ready. And we teach you how to work with tour operators, with travel agents, um, so that um, you can you can work directly with them. Um, I'm going to get to this later, but but I'll say it right now. So in a in the U.S., right? If I want to plan a vacation, I'm going to go with my sisters, for example, uh, down to Tybee Island in Georgia. So I go on. I look at hotels myself. I go on the website. I look at hotels. I might. I might look at a, a you know a, a air a house rental. I can I'll look on websites things to do. That's not how they do things in in Europe. They work through travel agents and tour operators. So they might even go physically into a Thomas Cook office, or they'll work with Virgin Holidays, and they will purchase a, a trip and they will pay upfront. They may even pay in installments. They will they will purchase this in advance. So these tour operators and these travel agents are very important people for you to know how to talk to, for you to know how to get your product in their brochures um, so that you can take advantage of um, all of these travel packages, holiday packages that they sell. Um, also, Tourism Cares, we do a lot of give back um, uh, events as well. Um, so I covered this already. There's a special member portal. You can go on any time of the, the day or night. You, you would have a member password, access all kinds of um, tools and research information. Next slide. Um, okay, so back to um, how we work. So when you're a member, you're really a part of our tourism and hospitality family. And that means you have access to all of us you, you personally. So you would meet our tourism development team. You would get to meet our convention development team and our destination services team. And I'm gonna get a little bit more into each of those in the next slides. Tourism development. So like I said, um, everywhere else besides here in the US, um, people book their leisure, their holiday travel through a tour operator or a travel agent. And our tourism development team works directly with all of these business organizations all over the world. And this is just a sampling of, of some um, social posts and some um, of the creative that we have out in market. Next slide. Convention development. So. Um, just as important as working with the travel trade to try to tap into people coming from all over the world when they want to come on vacation, we have a convention development department and they are going after meeting planners. It's really lucrative for us to land a big convention like the American Bar Association. They might be bringing 40,000 uh, lawyers in from all over. Um, and they, they might be having a big meeting at the Javits Center and staying at multiple hotels all over the city, dining at tons of restaurants, um, um, taking their clients out, et cetera. So we have a whole team that is dedicated to trying to bring different meetings, different conventions, and different events to our city. Next slide. Here's an example of the campaign that that team uses. Um, so Jeanette talked about It's Time for NYC. They have a little riff on it. It's called It's Time to Make It NYC. Plan a meeting for any moment. Rediscover New York City's state-of-the-art Javits Center. 10 reasons to book local for your next meeting. So they're targeting meeting planners. Next slide. Global communications. Another important part of what we do is pitch stories to media outlets all over the world. So um, we like to say that we are... Um, we're, we're small on budget, we're, we're big on brand. And our global communications department makes it their business to, to keep on top of everything that is new in New York City because that they, they can pitch that to journalists. Um, and unique stories, they wanna know the story of your business or what, what's happening that's new in, in all of our member businesses, what's happening in our neighborhoods, in our boroughs. And they pitch these stories to journalists. And we they are very successful at this. And we get a lot of free, 
publicity, as you can see here, CBS, Forbes, The Points Guy, News 12, Condé Nast Traveler. We get tons of free press featuring all kinds of businesses in all five boroughs um, by the work of our press team. But again, we can't include you in a story if we don't have a relationship with you, if we don't know who you are, if we don't have your cell phone number to call you and say, hey, can uh, New York One come over to your restaurant or to your nightclub on Tuesday because they're doing a story on XYZ. Um, and of course, all of these opportunities um, you know, come up on the fly all the time. But if you're a part of our membership network, then we know to include you. Next slide. Crisis plan. Another important function of NYC and company of our and of our uh, global communications team is when there is a crisis, as we've just been through a very long one, our press team is able to push out real time information to media outlets all over the world so that they have the real story of what's happening in New York City. And, you know, they, they did a great job as well as, of course, our marketing team and our, and our website was a great source of information on what was really open, especially in the early days when a lot of things were closed. We worked really hard to um, maintain lists of what was open. And, and, um, and, if, and also, if you couldn't um, physically come to a business, um, like a museum or a theater, how you can engage with them virtually. But um, crisis communications is an important part of what we do here at NYC and Company. Next slide. International representation. So we talked about, um, you know, how we how we communicate with these important travel agents, tour operators, and press all over the world. Um, this just shows some of our offices. We before the pandemic. We had 18 offices in 27 of our top international countries. We're getting back there. Right now, we have 15 offices in our top 20 markets, and that will just continue to grow. Next slide. Events and trade shows. All of our members are able to come to events and trade shows with us. I'm going to show you a picture in the next slide of a trade show. Next slide. There we go. So this is a this is what a trade show looks like. We go to a probably 60 trade shows all over the world. Our tourism development team does and our convention development team. And they go and they promote New York City and our members are able to go with us. It is an additional fee when you go to Berlin with us. Um, and we help you every step of the way. But if you can see in the screenshot here is the Metropolitan Museum of Art, um, uh, 70 Park Avenue. Um, so our members go and we help them make personal connections with tour operators, travel agents, meeting planners, so that they can pitch their business to these end consumers, which represent a lot of other people. Next slide. Uh, if you want to check out all of the opportunities that we have for 2022, feel free to scan this QR code and you can look at all of the places we're going in 2022 and some of the, some of the fees that go along with them. Next slide. I'll leave that out for one second in case anybody's taking a picture and then I'll move it along. Oh, thank you, Rob. I am going fast, um, but of course we're happy to uh, slow it down, have a one-on-one -on -one with anyone who is interested. Um, so another um, member benefit um, as we said earlier, is educational programs and networking events. And next slide. Uh, Tourism Ready 101, I talked about this earlier. This is a series of um, uh, educational uh, sessions. It's like a course that builds upon each other and it teaches you the one -on -one, 101 of how to work with tour operators and how to how to talk their language. It's really not rocket science, but there are some things you need to know about how to price your your business when you work with them, um, and just some terms of how they work. And we teach all of that to you in this class. Next slide. Our annual meeting. This is the mother of all of our networking events. We expect about fifteen hundred. Um, members to be at the Javits Center on March 30th. We are jam packed with education. We have got panels. Uh, there'll be a lovely networking reception at the end. Um, the annual meeting is really the biggest celebration and gathering of our industry. And again, you're all invited to it. And it would be very helpful if you fill out the Google form that Kristen put in the Q&A so we have your email address um, and we can send you that invitation. Next slide. 
oh, there we go. So um, we did we did go through this kind of quickly, um, and there's a lot more behind all of those programs and events. But um, we we just wanted to really give you an overview. Hopefully, you have a better understanding of who we are. How do we fit in the whole in the city and within uh, city government, um, and and some of the benefits we have, how we work, and how we can help you. So um, we're happy to take. Any questions, Ariel? I don't know if you want to moderate if there's anything in chat. Hi, Kelly. First of all, thank you and to the entire NYC and company team for this presentation. Um, I think it was really informational and enlightening uh, for the nightlife community. Uh, we all see what you do peripherally, so it's so good to know how this industry can be involved. I do know that we have been answering questions in the chat, um, and so I think maybe audibly we can just uh, let people know what's the best way to reach out to you so that I know we're, we are recording this webinar and thank you for this incredible generous 50% off of the membership um, until May 31st. I know that's going to inspire so many people to be involved and we're going to work between now and then to really spread the word and make sure that nightlife is showing up and being represented in a way that's really going to benefit them and you and the city. So. Um, since it's recorded and we'll be sharing this on our newsletter and social media, why don't you let people know how, what's the best way to contact you? I think it's to fill out the Google form, although right. if people are viewing this afterwards, um, Rob, we could give your email address, right? Didn't you promise me that before we started? <laughs> I did. Sorry, yeah. Rob. <laughs> I, I, yes, uh, of course. Yes, you give my email address. Okay. So I can... I can uh, I can send that over to you um, and sure. you can broadcast it out through your channels. Well, you know what? The best thing is also that it's really what the Office of Nightlife is for, is to be that conduit and a bridge to uh, the different resources. So if people are interested in contacting NYC and Co and learning more about membership, we will be sharing it on our newsletter. Um, you can reach us at our website is nyc.gov slash nightlife. You can also follow our social at NYC Nightlife Gov. And what, Kelly, what is the NYC and company social handles? Oh, John, I'm going to give that one to you. <laughs> All of our social handles? Yeah. NYC Go, is it? At it's NYC Go? Go? Yes, at, at, at NYC Go. Go. And I want to go on Twitter and Instagram, certainly. Yep. And Facebook, I think we're just out. Yep. So, oh, there now it's dropped in the chat. So, um, I don't know if we have any more Q&A, so we will just chalk that up to answering all of these great questions in advance with this amazing presentation. This is something we've wanted to do for a really long time, so I'm really grateful to NYC and Co for opening their arms to nightlife and providing this great opportunity. Honestly, it's such an incredible, powerful engine. Um, over 60 million plus people come every year. There's also staycations and local tourism. And um, it's so important that the operators and nightlife businesses really engage in this incredible resource that I know can help to support their businesses and amplify nightlife um, as an important aspect of nightlife and New York culture. So, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and, and again, we, we we would love we would love more content on our site. So so bring it on and and send us your info, and then we'll reach back out for photos and come to the annual meeting and. It's a, it's a great industry and we love working uh, with the Office of Nightlife. And um, so it's, it's um, we, we would love to talk with anyone. So just reach out, reach out through Ariel, reach out direct to us. Yeah, I mean, it's worth reiterating, there are these great membership opportunities uh, that you have discounted, and there's also free opportunities to be oh. able to have presence on the website. I think you told me, you know, the majority of people who travel to New York from outside of the country really 
you know, plan their trips. They plan where they're going to eat. They plan where they're going to go out. They have itineraries in advance before they even land in New York. And the more businesses and nightlife establishments that are on your website where they're planning their trips, the more um, attention and business you can get from this amazing website and office that you guys have. So we're going to do our part to keep spreading the word. Thank you for meeting us halfway and joining us here today. And uh, we will continue to shine a light on nightlife. And thank you for all you do for New York. And thank you to everybody for joining today. And um, we will be in touch with you soon. Stay strong, stay safe. Thank you. Thank you all.